I really, there's right. nothing negative I have to share with you. Yeah, exactly. But thank you for that information. So watch what you say about Eddie. You know? <laughs> no, okay. he's a good guy. All right. All right. My name is Larry Crow. I'm interviewer today for the History Makers Project. Our videographer is Scott Stearns. Uh, sir, could you please state your full name and spell it for us, please? Surely. My name is Chauncey Edward Spencer II, and that's C-H-A-U-N-C-E-Y-E-D-W-A-R-D-S-P-E-N-C-E-R, the second, Roman numeral. Okay. And what is your date of birth and place of birth? My date of birth is March the 14th, 1956, and my date of birth is Dayton, Ohio, Miami Valley Hospital. Okay. And um, what is your occupation? My occupation is that I'm an automotive consultant. Okay. And what is today's date? Today's date is June the 9th, 2010. And where are we at the present time? You don't have to give your address necessarily. Sure, my address is 2510 Fullerton, F-U-L-L-E-R-T-O-N Street, Detroit, Michigan, 48238. Okay, now, um, before we go into depth, there are five lightweight questions we ask as kind of a warm-up, and they only require a short answer. Okay. First one is, do you have a favorite food? Uh, not really. Okay. Do you have a favorite color? Not really. Okay, these are really short. Uh, do you have a <laughs> favorite uh, time of the year? Uh, summer. All right. Do you have a favorite vacation destination? Uh, somewhere where it's warm and the water is blue. Okay. Then the last one is, do you have um, a favorite phrase or saying? Uh, I am a person uh, equal to any other person would be my phrase and we are all equal until we act different. Okay. Okay. Now um, I'm going to ask about your family history because it is so rich and um, can you um, Give us your uh, mother's full name and spell it for us. My mother's full name is Anna, A-N-N-A, -N -N -A, May, S Howard, Spencer. Okay. And what is her date of birth and place of birth? Her date of birth, her place of birth is Lexington, Kentucky. And her date of birth is August the 15th, 1922. Okay. Uh, now, what do you know about her side of the family? What can you tell us? Is there, not, are not, there interesting stories about her? There are. There's stories that haven't been told. We don't know a lot about my mother. My mother's uh, father was white, uh, and she never knew her father, nor did we know him as our grandfather. And at that time, it was taboo uh, to have uh, a black father or a black mother and a white father and a white mother. So uh, Kentucky was not a safe place for us. So she left Kentucky and went to Chicago where she was raised by her mother and her stepfather, Clyde Howard. Okay. And she lived her life and grew up and educated herself in Chicago, Illinois, graduating with John Johnson from the Johnson Publications. Okay, so she, she went to Wendell Phillips High School? No, or she DeSable? went to DeSable, DeSable High School. She okay. graduated from DeSable in 1940. She was in school with John Johnson. That's correct. Okay. He was a year above her. All right. Did she ever mention uh, uh, Dr. Margaret Burroughs? Not that I know of, but I'm sure. I'm sure that she had. Uh, I wouldn't be able to honestly answer that, but I'm sure. Okay. All right. So, um, so what, what did she do for a living in Chicago? Basically? She did quite a few things. She worked. She was a procurement officer for the United States Air Force. Um, she was in management with General Telephone in San Bernardino, California. Now, now did she finish college? Was she able to finish college? She went or to uh, Northwestern University. All right. Taking college courses. Mm -hmm. Okay. So she had some college. She, she had some college, college, correct. That's a good, pretty good college. Yes, it is. And uh, so she was a procurement officer. Procurement for officer for the Air Force. Uh, what she did was is... 
Okay, what, I'm sorry. Was it for the United States Air Force or the Army Air Corps? Before it was. Or? It was the Air Force. Air Force. Okay. Yeah. She yeah. interviewed all uh, quite a few of the German scientists that were coming into this country uh, during World War II. It was her job at that time? Mm. Very interesting job. Where was she based in? Was she based Chicago. In Chicago. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm. Is there a story attached that you can tell us about? I wish I could. She'd have to tell you. I don't. I don't know all the details. I do know that she was sent from Patterson Field, later Wright Patterson, to Chicago, to conduct these interviews and gather information to return back. Mm. She's in Wright Patterson and David, too. Mm. Yes. And later on at Norton, all the bases. Now, my father. Did your parents at, meet at at Wright Patterson? No, interesting story. They met actually at Harlem Field on 87th Street in Harlem Avenue in Chicago because her, grand, her father, her stepfather, was an aviation enthusiast and he was involved in supporting blacks in aviation. So every Sunday they would go out to the airport and her mother would bring lunches out to them, chicken or whatever. And so she would have to tag along and that's how they met and she was seen by, because she was only 17 or 16 years old at the time. Uh, and my father was about 30 some years old at the so time. So her father, Clyde Howard, mm -hmm. then was a? He was a mechanic. Okay. He was a mechanic and he was a pipe fitter for the city of Chicago. He was a, a airplane aficionado and would go out to Harlem Field where the um, where they'd black fly. flyers would fly, mm -hmm. would fly. That's correct. Okay. I think it's called Oakland, Illinois, is the correct name of the city. And there's a shopping center there now. Hmm. So this is almost like a private air show in some ways. You, That's correct. You can go out and you see the black flyers fly. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, it was that segregated. Hmm. Schumacher, okay. later on, he had that feel. And Schumacher told him from Robbins, Illinois, where they had the challenger, where they had, were having the problems with the police driving back and forth because of their race. The Schumacher says, when I get this airport, you fellas can come out and fly at my airport. And that was Harlem Airport, even though it was still segregated. He said that you would have to still be on this end of the field, but you wouldn't be harassed uh, by the police because you were right there in Chicago. So this is in Oak Park? Oakland. Oakland. Okay. All right. All right. Well, I get a different Oakland, okay. Oakland, Illinois. Oakland. So this is out in the... 90s or something west. Uh, yeah, 82nd. 82nd. West, 82nd. West. I don't know how many far it goes back. Mm -hmm. You're in Chicago and you can and tell Harlem, me better. Yeah, that's, that's way west. Yeah, yeah, that's where it's at. Southwest Chicago. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, Oklahoma. Okay. All right. That's interesting. Yeah. Um, and so, they were married there, if mm -hmm. I may add. They were married at that field in 1940. Okay. They, her birthday, she turned 18 August the 15th, and on August the 18th, she was married of the same year, 1940. 1940. Okay. And so, uh, now, uh, did, was it because of her interest in, in aviation that she got a job with the Air Force? No, I think it was the connections between my father and his, his living um, that made the Air Force the possibility because she was so young, uh, you know, there was really, she hadn't come to the point where she could decide what she wanted to do because she sort of just dropped right out of the skillet into the pan. She went from being a high school senior to being a wife. Okay. And then but it wasn't for a few years before she became, she worked as a procurement officer though for the, the Air Force, right? She was hired in, uh, I'm going to say 1942 and I'm guessing, no, yeah, about 42, 41 or 42. Right after that, she was, she went right into the Air Force, right into that job. This would have been an Army Air Corps then, right? Okay, then that's... Not the Air Force. Okay, right? that's Army Air Corps. Yeah. Okay. Yes. All right. All right. That's correct, because it wasn't until 48 that they changed it to the Air Force. Okay, that's what I'm just trying to make a distinction. You, you're absolutely right. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, so let me... Um, this is just a little bit about your mother. What, what was her personality like? Very pleasant, very easygoing... Uh, She's a very calm individual. Uh, never would you see her get upset. Uh, she was the opposite of my father. Uh, but she had the same energies and the same strengths, but 
her introduction was entirely different. Uh, people now, I've gone back to Virginia a couple of times, back and forth, and my mother was in charge of uh, the Employment Commission at one time in Virginia. And some of the people that she helped get jobs, they're grown and have families now, and they've come back to her. Well, she headed the CEDAR program there. And they come back to her and they say, Mrs. Spencer, I just want to thank you because you gave me my first opportunity. So she was that kind of person, uh, a person of giving, and the rewards would come as her life continued on. Okay. Now let me ask about your, your father and his side of the family. And I know this is going to be a long question. <laughs> okay. <laughs> long answer, probably. Yes. But uh, so all, a, a lot of what we're going to be talk, talking about is what happened, is your father's involvement in, in uh, aviation and okay. such. Okay. But uh, can you give us your father's full name and spell it for us? Yes, Chauncey Edward Spencer Sr. Well, it's the same as yours, basically. Exactly. Except as Sr. Mm -hmm. All right, so we don't have to spell it again. Thank you. Now, what's his date of birth? And, his, uh, his date of birth is November the 5th, 1906. Where was he born? His place of birth is Lynchburg, Virginia. Okay. okay. Now, what can you tell us about your father's side of the family? Wow. My, side, my father's side of the family is strong in history. Uh, we go back from war... Spencer Sr. Uh, and Mary Spencer. Those are my, gran my, my uh, great grandfather, my great grandmother. Okay. My, my great grandfather, Warwick Spencer, came from William Spencer, the cousin to Princess Diane and Churchill. So our lineage goes back on the side of the Spencer name, goes back to Europe and the surname Spencer. Uh, he was a slave and then freed after his master died. His master left instructions that, uh, of course, they were listed as property. And my grandfather, my great-grandfather would have been listed as property. And she could keep the property as long as she behaved. And behaving at that time means she couldn't get married to anybody else. Of course, she didn't behave, and they were all freed. And so she, he was freed. Uh, and then he uh, later uh, married his wife. Uh, interesting story on that. His, his wife, Mary Payne, uh, was married to a Cherokee, and he enslaved himself to, to pay the freedom of his wife, who would have been my great-great-grandmother and my great-great-grandfather. And that's the pain size. We come from the Spencer Anderson pain. Mm. It's where the lineage has come from. Uh, furthermore, on my father... What, what was her um, mother's name, the one that married a Cherokee? It was, it would have been her, her mother? Mary. Ma Mary Payne. Her name is Mary as well. That's correct. Okay. So, great grandmother, Mary Payne. Okay. All right. And this Cherokee Indian actually sold himself into slavery to Correct. buy her freedom out of slavery. Nelson Payne is, was his name. His Nelson name was Nelson Payne. Payne. Okay. Yep. And I'm, I'm going to show you pictures of that uh, at the end of the interview where you can get a picture to a name. Hmm. Okay. Um, so th this would be in. How far back were we talking about? Well, here? we're talking uh, before, or something? yes, or? around eight, you're right around the money, 1830s. And the picture I have with the families, it has on the back of the picture the dates that they were born. So I can be exact after that for you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, about what year were, were your grand, great grandfather and great grandmother born? Uh, wow, I'm going to say probably the 1830s would be them, and then my great-great would go back further than that. Okay. And I'm guessing, and I have the information, but I'd have to go get it. I'm going to say maybe the 1817, 1816. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Um, what about your grandparents on your father's side? Okay, my grandparents on my father's side. Uh, Edward and Ann Spencer. Edward Spencer uh, is from the lineage that I just told you about. He's the son of Warwick Spencer, my great-grandfather. Ann Spencer is the daughter of uh, Sarah Scales and Joel Cephas Bannister. And Sarah, and, and Sarah Scales comes from the uh, Reynolds. Her great-grandmother was a concubine of the Reynolds Tobacco Company. And she was a Seminole Indian. 
my grandfather was also a Seminole Indian, and he broke away during the, uh, when they sent Captain Lee later on, General Lee, down to Florida to gather these Indians for the, uh, the Trail of Tears. Uh, my great-grandfather broke away and, and migrated into Virginia and got away from them and started a tribe, and he was the chief of the Tubalu tribe. How do you spell it? So I have that written down. I can't spell it. T U B V. I I wouldn't even attempt any further. But it is a Tuvalu tribe, and if you look at the Nation of Indians, you can see where that tribe is at, uh, down by near in Virginia, uh, above from North Carolina, where the Blackfoot and the others were. The Seminole, if I may, I also add this: the Seminole Indians were the only Indians that never signed a peace treaty with the white man and were never put in a reservation, to today. So sometimes my attitude I have, I got it honestly. Okay. All right. Um, I know there are some Seminole in Oklahoma, and and it, according to your story, they actually, you know, Seminoles were taken to reservations in Oklahoma, so, but they, they never signed a treaty. They never signed a treaty, and I can and, and absolutely, you're absolutely correct. I can never say nobody or I'm forever, unless I'm the only person on this planet. So obviously, you're correct. Okay. But I can tell you that my, my grandparents were never put in a reservation, and I know that the Seminoles, according to history, never signed a peace treaty. But they were considered one of the civilized peoples. Or, or of, five civilized yeah, five tribes. civilized, the Cherokees, the Blackfoot, mm -hmm. the Seminoles, and so on. Okay. Um, so um, now, Ann Spencer, that's your... Uh, Father's grandmother? No, that's my that's father's your, mother. My father's mother. Okay, so that's Ann, my grandmother. Okay, so that's your 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 grandfather was Edward Spencer. And that's right. And, and Edward Spencer and, was Ann Spencer's okay. husband. All right. Okay. Okay. So that's okay. So all right. So um, well, I know. Well, tell us about them. What what do they do? Um, okay. I know it's a long story about Ann Spencer. Yeah, and Edward Spencer. Edward Spencer was just as powerful as Ann Spencer. Ann Spencer gets most of the variety, but it, it, it you know there's always support behind support. Uh, Ann Spencer's known to, to this world was her poetry. Uh, she opened up a self library for blacks because blacks weren't allowed to go to the libraries in Virginia, in Lynchburg. And so she opened up a lending library. And she, she taught a lot of the young people and a lot of the adults how to read. Uh, then later on, she was hired as the first African American librarian at Dunbar High School. And now that Dunbar High School, the media center, is named after Ann Spencer. So this is Dunbar High School. Dunbar Lynchburg. High School in Lynchburg, Virginia. Mm -hmm. Paul Lawrence Dunbar. Yeah, from Dayton, the town you were born in. Correct, <laughs> ironically. And Paul Lawrence Dunbar, if I won't go veer off too far, was, went to school with Orville Wright. Yeah, in, and, the there's, right. and there's yeah. talk that, he, that Dunbar, Paul Lawrence Dunbar, had a lot to do with the engineering from the bicycle shop transisting over to the aviation, which they called the flying machine. Later on, we called it the airplane. All happened in Dayton. Mrs. C is, has done a wonderful job there, and I'm sure you know Mrs. Ski down there. Yeah, Laverne Ski. Laverne, right. right. Well, uh, she's, we interviewed her for the project. Right? Okay, well, she's, she knows me very well. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Okay. Now, all right. Um, so, um, well, uh, more about Ann Spencer. Now, okay, Ann you, Spencer. You were she, telling me she uh -huh. knew James Weldon Johnson very well. Right? Yes. Uh, well, how that got to be is that Virginia Seminary is the college that Edward and Ann Spencer met at and they graduated from. <clears throat> Ann Spencer's uh, parents divorced when she was very young and she lived with the Dixon family in Bramwell, West Virginia. And there's a bridge in Bramwell, West Virginia that's named after Ann Spencer. It's called Annie's Bridge because that's what Ann Spencer ran back and forth across. Its population is 400 people and the average house there is $1 million. And the mayor from Branwell was just in Lynchburg uh, for the uh, play that my sister was has been given credit to be the playwright for called Annie's Pencil. And they uh, gave a proclamation in honor of Ann Spencer and uh, shared the information on the bridge and so on and so forth. Hmm, okay. And that just recently happened uh, three or four days before you came to interview me. Yeah, the play was pretty Yes. Good. Okay. And the mayor's presence. Hmm. So the mayor of Lynchburg was there, and I mean, and of, of, of Lynchburg too, and Lynchburg, the mayor yeah. and the mayor of Bramwell, West Virginia. Mm -hmm. And my grandmother, in her autobiography written by Dr. Lee Green, 
uh, my father asked, uh, Mother, why did you tell him you were born in West Virginia? She said, because I didn't want to be born in a slave state. Mm -hmm. So obviously Virginia and West Virginia at one time before the Civil War were one state. Yes. And we know how that worked after that. So she has, there's a biography of her written by. Oh, yes. By, Ton by, who? They're by they're, Dr. They're Lee Green. They're more, more Oh, more? yeah. Yeah. Oxford University, Yale, uh, Library of Congress. You know, not to be arrogant, which I try not to be, is that, you know, all this history, the Spencer's history is, is well documented. It's well documented. And as my mother says, Ann Spencer, my mother, she says, Chauncey, you know, if they really were interested, they'd go look for it. So. So anyway, but I, I, I told my mother that it's important for me to make sure that they get it. So I don't want them to have to go too far to look for it. I don't want them to lose interest in what we want to teach them. Yeah, this is a library tool, actually. So right. you know, what, you're, what you're telling us can be you know, accessed by students and researchers in the future. Thank you. So, and, that's what, and that's part of my intentions. Okay. My intentions is, is to not make anything but give it all. Okay, so uh, by how, how many bios of her are, are written? Are, they, are these books? Full-length books? Are they, yeah. are they, you know, articles? Or, or no, these are full-length books. So uh, about how, how uh, many books did you say? Unfaded Garden is one. Unfaded Garden. Unfaded Garden, mm -hmm. written by Dr. Uh, Lee Green. Uh, and I don't know the rest of them right off the top of my head, but I'll tell you what I, uh, I will share with you because I have some of them upstairs, and I'll bring them down. Um, I can't think of her name, my goodness. But anyway, there was, a, there was another book called a uh, half my world, and I can't think of the author of that book, but she's a very close friend of my mother's and very kind. So please forgive me for not remembering your name, but I did remember the name of your book. Hmm. Okay, so she was a, um, I guess, a, uh, would you call her a Har uh, well? She was the Harlem Renaissance era, but not in Harlem. No, so she was a she, she was a poet of the Harlem Renaissance, okay. and the Harlem Renaissance were what they call the New Negro. After Reconstruction, there were two different Negroes. There were the Negroes that went with Booker T, and there were the Negroes that went with W.D. Du Bois. My grandmother went with W.E. Du Bois. Booker T, Booker T was more laid back, and well, if they give us a little more, we'll smile. Du Bois was like, we're not here taking our hands out like this. We're taking what's supposed to be ours. And Spencer was part of that crew. Okay, okay. Yep. So that makes sense. Uh... And so were the Harlem Renaissance. That's mm -hmm. what they were. They used literature and their knowledge to change the way people treat people. Now, does she uh, uh, teach anywhere? or? Ann Spencer. Mm -hmm. She probably lectured several places. She taught. She was a librarian, so that was a class. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, so, okay. she did that. And a librarian. All right. Uh -huh. Okay. Now, I don't want to leave anything out, out about her. Because um, we said she had a strong relationship with James Will Johnson. And yes. He how, wrote a poem dedicated to her. Yes. Right. Let me tell you how they met. Uh, Virginia Seminary had, during their commencement, they had asked uh, W. Du Bois to come down to speak as their speaker for the commencement. And they had to have some place for Du Bois to stay. And the Spencer home were one of the few f homes there that African Americans had inside plumbing. So Du Bois was allowed to stay there, and during his stay there, he noticed a lot of things in the house and people that were coming there to the Edward and Ann Spencer home. Because my grandmother says that they didn't know they were poor, because in the neighborhood, everybody was poor. But we all gave to each other. Nobody was hungry. See, that neighborhood was raised up. That, was, that, that neighborhood before the Spencers bought that, they, bought, they paid $8,000 and bought that whole area. It was the Davis camp the Confederate camp at one time. So there were whites and blacks that lived in that neighborhood and still lived in that neighborhood during the times of the Spencers living there. So they didn't know anything about being poor or being different, and they just cared for each other. And that's the kind of life that Ann Spencer continued to live uh, through her whole life. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right. Now, um, I guess it, get, it takes us to your... Uh, your um, well, oh, you didn't t tell us much about uh, Edward Spencer. Let me tell you about my grandfather. My grandfather was the first African-American post, uh, uh, postal worker in Lynchburg, Virginia. And they gave him the job as partial post. We call it UPS now, carrying packages. And he delivered packages. And later on, several blacks have gotten jobs in the post office. Actually, those two jobs, the two jobs that I've seen blacks, when I go back and study my history, are teachers 
and working in the post office. And the majority of us have retired from those two different fields. But Edward Spencer uh, was been given credit for the opening up, uh, setting the first housing projects. He got rid of slump housing in Virginia in Lynchburg, and they called the street Spencer Place because he built six, he reconditioned six homes and brought them up to standard. And there's articles about that. Edward Spencer did many, many things. He was supportive in all of his uh, family's uh, efforts. Uh, both of his daughters, one went to Hunter College and the other went to uh, Fisk. Uh, and the reason they did is because Elroy and Teen, my two aunts, my father's sisters, they weren't allowed to go to University of Virginia because they didn't allow blacks there. So they paid for them to go to Hunter College in New York. Yeah, that's a curious practice in the South. And we've yeah. heard about that before yeah. many times, yeah. And let me tell you how, how, how life comes full circle. Guess where my grandmother's, picture, my grandmother's papers are being kept now? UVA. How about that? So she got in there. Yeah, that's well, the irony of all this. Yeah, yeah it is. Okay. It's, that's why it shows you that people are people, and intelligence will override ignorance every day of the week. Um, now, okay, uh, so uh, what did your father say about growing up? What did, he, did, did he tell you much about his, his growing up? He did. Uh, he lived a very happy-go-lucky life. Uh, he was the only son uh, of Edward and Ann Spencer with two sisters that were older than him. He was the youngest, so he was on the spoiled side. Uh, he got everything he wanted. Uh, the Spencer family was considered as a prominent family. Uh, we had our, 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 our strength and money was in property. We owned a lot of property in Virginia. Um, my aunt, uh, Elroy, married the first African-American uh, New York State judge, Judge Rivers. Uh, my other aunt married an African professor, uh, Stevens. Uh, I call her Teeny, but her name was Bethel. Okay, so one sister married a judge. A judge. Or? A New York, a New York okay. Supreme Judge, and the other married a professor, a college professor. Do you know the name of the judge? Judge Rivers. Judge Rivers. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I, I have his, had it. Okay. And I have his picture, and I'll and, be able to get and, it. And the other one married a. Uh, uh, the other sister married a. A professor, a college professor. Okay. And he was from Africa. He was from the United States, but he's, okay. his his profession of study was Africa, African okay. and he, African he, studies. What was his name? Stevens is all I know. Stevens, I really? never met but him. But there are very few Africanists in those days. Yeah. You know, um, uh, uh, the uncle of Lorraine Hansberry, uh, William Leo Hansberry, and Howard was an Africanist, but a man named Spencer. That, that's, that's no, his name was Stevens. Stevens, I'm sorry. Stevens. Stevens. Her Stevens. name was Spencer until right. she married. Okay. I'm sorry. And the other one changed to Rivers. She was Spencer. Her name Stevens. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do you know where he taught? Somewhere in New Jersey is all I know. I don't know a lot about him. But I do know that his daughters uh, are still alive, and one lives in East Orange, New Jersey, and the other one lives in Montclair, New Jersey. Those are my first cousins, mm -hmm. Billy and Bobby. All right. Very interesting. Okay. Uh -huh. All right. So, um, so where did your uh, father go to uh, school? Virginia Seminary. Graduated uh, with a bachelor's degree in sociology. Okay. Um, I guess, well, since a lot of this is about, okay. So he, he, he finished high school in Lynchburg. Is there a name of the black high school in Lynchburg? Uh, Paul Lawrence Dunbar. Okay. He graduated, that's but that's an interesting story, but that can go too long. But I'll just give you the tidbits on that. He graduated from Dunbar, but he didn't graduate from Dunbar. Dunbar and E.C. Glass were the two high schools in Lynchburg, Virginia. E.C. Glass was a white high school and Dunbar was a black high school. Well, they didn't allow the black high school to get out the same time the white high school got out for graduation. So they had to wait 30 minutes later. My father graduated and left that school when E.C. Glass got out. So they told my father, you didn't graduate. So he would have to go back to seminary, being the college, and continue to get his credits for them to accept that. Well, he didn't do that. He went to DeWitt Clinton High School in New York, where he worked on the Hudson. And he graduated while he was there staying with his sister that was married to Judge Rivers. Hmm. So he sort of graduated from Dunbar, but he really graduated from a high school in New York. Okay. And it gets complicated, so I won't carry and then, it through. And then he went to school where? Is, is and then he, con he continued on. He did his college and graduated from college at Virginia Seminary in Lynchburg, Virginia. Virginia Seminary. Uh, Virginia Seminary it was the oldest uh, college in the state of Virginia. Okay. 
and, and one of his teachers uh, was Sterling Brown. Sterling Brown taught English. Mm. He knew all these people because they partied at his parents' house. They used to call James Weldon Johnson's parties the Johnson's parties. You ever see that move, the, the, the album? Okay, I'm sorry. Oh, yes, I paused a second. That's okay. okay. 